What makes up a great tripod and how do you go about buying one for yourself? That is the subject of today's video. Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Susie with Gemini Connect. I run a photo and video production studio here in Seattle, Washington, and I also make YouTube videos where I talk about some of the gear that I use on a professional basis. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Today we're going to talk about tripods, and these are one of those camera accessories that people like to buy after they get their first camera. The problem is there are a lot of tripods out on the market, and there are lots of price points and different features, so it's really hard to figure out which one is right for you. So the bottom line of today's video is to give you six features that you should look for before you buy a new tripod. I'm also going to talk about the four tripods I own and give you the reason why I own four tripods. So let's talk about why you need a tripod in the first place. And the main reason why you would need a tripod is if you plan to shoot at a low shutter speed, a high f-stop, or if you plan to do any bracketing for composites or HDR photography. This mostly applies to real estate and architecture photography, as well as landscape photography. You might also need a tripod if you plan to do selfies or group shots in which you want to be in the photo, or if you plan to do vlogs or videos. So with those reasons in mind, let's go over the six features that you should look for in a tripod. The first feature to consider is the payload or the load capacity of the tripod. To come up with this number, you should consider the heaviest combination of camera and lenses that you plan to use with the tripod. For example, this full frame camera with a 70 to 200 lens is a lot bigger and heavier than this crop sensor camera with a wide angle lens. So the ideal tripod for this camera combination is pretty different than that of this camera setup. When looking at payloads of tripods, it's really important to consider the payload of both the tripod itself as well as the tripod head. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a tripod, the three legs here, and this piece here is considered the tripod head, and the tripod head is what connects your camera to the tripod. The tripod head is usually able to come off of the tripod, so you don't need to necessarily use the same tripod head that came with your tripod. In fact, some tripods don't even come with a head and you have to buy them separately. So bottom line, make sure that both the tripod and the tripod head are able to support your camera. The second feature to consider are the maximum and minimum heights of your tripod. So to consider what's ideal for you, you really have to think about what situations are you going to be using your camera. And do you plan to be eye level with your camera or are you going to be shooting subjects that are particularly tall or particularly short? Most tripods are able to get pretty tall, but not very many of them can actually get very low. So this is one of my favorite tripods here. This is the Mi Photo. A road trip classic tripod, the aluminum version. And one of the reasons why I like this tripod is that I can get really, really low with it. It can almost be flat down on the ground so I can get some really low angle shots. And that's really important because some of these other tripods that I have here don't have legs that are that flexible. This is my Benro Travel Flat Tripod, and as you might be able to see here, the legs are pretty stiff. This is as far out as they go, so this tripod really can't get much lower. So when you're looking for a new tripod, be sure to check out the maximum and minimum height and make sure that it's gonna be enough to support whatever subjects you're gonna be photographing or taking videos of. The third quality to consider is how stable is your tripod. The stability of your tripod really depends on several different features. Most tripods are made out of either aluminum or carbon fiber. Aluminum tripods tend to be heavier and actually cheaper, but as a result, they are more solid compared to carbon fiber tripods, which can cost a lot more than aluminum tripods. And even though they're more lightweight, carbon fiber tripods are sometimes a little bit less stable. To go back to my Mi Photo tripod, this is the aluminum version, which is 3.6 pounds and only $159. Compare that to the carbon fiber version of this exact same tripod, which is 3.1 pounds, but $320. It's a pretty big difference. Whether that's worth it to you or not really depends on your budget and how much you value that extra weight that you're saving. Another feature that can affect the stability of your tripod is this little retractable spike that sometimes is on the end or the feet of your tripod. I don't actually have that feature on any of these tripods, but I have this monopod, one of my favorite monopods that I use, and it has a really good example of this retractable spike. So usually this spike is on the bottom of the foot and all you have to do is spin it in order to make it show, but having a spike like this, if you're working, especially doing landscape photography or on unsolid ground, you can stick this spike inside of the ground underneath you, and that helps give you a little bit of extra stability in the case of both tripods and monopods. So the last feature to consider when it comes to tripod stability is this little retractable hook. So some tripods come with a hook, and this is really great for adding a little bit of extra weight to make your tripod more stable. 
Things that you might attach to this hook include sandbags or what I like to use is a water bottle. If you have a water bottle that has a hole for the hook to attach to, you can fill that water bottle with water and by doing that, you attach it to the center column here of your tripod and that gives you just some extra stability to hold that tripod in place. The fourth quality to consider for your tripod is how easy is it to carry around? That was one of the biggest features that I looked for in my tripod because so much of my work that I do on a tripod involves a lot of travel. So I really wanted a tripod that folded up really compact and also was lightweight to begin with. If you start out with a heavy tripod, then it's going to be pretty hard to travel with it. But with that said, if you plan to do a lot of your photo and video work in studio and you won't be traveling around with that tripod very often, then it might be a good idea to get a really heavy one so that it's really stable. So it really comes back to where and how you plan to use your tripod. This again is why I prefer the Mi Photo tripods because even though they deploy like this, you can actually fold up these legs and make this tripod even more compact. And it's just a lot easier to stick this inside of a suitcase, inside of a bag, and be able to travel with it easily. You also might wanna consider how your tripod legs extend. Most tripod legs lock by either one of two mechanisms. This is a twist lock mechanism which involves twisting it and then extending the legs. And you have to do that for all three legs and however many columns there are, depending on how tall you want your tripod to be. Most of these tripods that deploy like this are, you know, three sections, five sections. And the problem with this is that the more sections are in your tripod legs, the longer it takes to set up your tripod and thus put it away. Compare that to my heavy duty Manfrotto tripod here, which is a really great example of these clamp locking mechanisms. So with these, instead of twisting them, all you have to do is lift this flap here and extend the leg and then lock it back into place. This Manfrotto tripod right here is also a really great example of a two section tripod leg that only has two sections that can deploy and thus it's a lot faster to set it up and pack it back up. So which of these tripod locking mechanisms is best really comes down to personal preference. I tend to use the twist locks just because they are on more tripods that I've seen out there. But at the end of the day, I do actually prefer these clamp style locks if they're available. The fifth feature to consider when you're buying a new tripod is the quality of the tripod head. So as we talked about earlier, this tripod head here is usually able to come off of the tripod body. And in some cases, you'll have to buy a tripod head and completely separately. That was the case of my first tripod I ever bought, which is this Benro Travel Flat aluminum tripod. But when I did buy this tripod, it didn't come with a head. So I had to buy the head separately. And this, when I bought it, it was actually a $166 tripod head, the Benro B1. At this point, that price has come down a lot to $114 last I checked. And it's still one of my absolute favorite tripod heads. It's a ball head and it just works really, really well. So in retrospect, I'm really glad that I spent a little bit more for a good tripod head because it's held up in the seven years that I've had this head. So tripod heads really vary. These ball heads here are probably the most prominent type of tripod heads that you'll see, but there are also options like a pistol grip or this Manfrotto three-way, which is my latest favorite tripod head. It's actually a little bit cheaper than that Benro at $88. But I really like this tripod head because it is just easier to lock it into place. And ball heads have a tendency over time to end up slipping, especially if you've got a low quality tripod head. This is a great example of a low quality tripod head. And it actually does not stay in place very well, especially if I'm using a heavier camera rig on top of this ball head. So be careful when you're buying your ball heads and make sure that you invest in a high quality one. The final thing to consider when it comes to tripod heads heads is what type of plate is on top of that tripod head. So this is the mechanism that screws into the bottom of your camera and allows you to attach your camera on top of the ball head which attaches to your tripod. So there are two main types of plates for tripods. This is the Arco Swiss type which is probably the most prominent and universal tripod plate out there. The only problem with these Arco Swiss plates is that you often need an Allen wrench to secure them. This is the other type of plate out there. These are specific to Manfrotto tripod heads. 
And the nice thing about these, at least the ones that I own, is that you don't need an Allen wrench to secure it to the bottom of your camera. They have these nice little handles here, so they're a lot easier to attach to the bottom of your camera. And the sixth and final quality to look for in a good tripod are any extra features or bells and whistles that come with that tripod. An example of these features is a bubble level, which is sometimes built into your tripod head or the tripod itself. And that just helps make sure that your camera is even when you're shooting. Although you could also buy a bubble level separately to put on top of your camera or just use a leveler inside of your camera. But it's still a nice little perk to have if you want to make sure that your camera and your tripod are absolutely straight. Another possible perk are these tripods that convert into monopods. So this Mi Photo is actually the main reason why I went for this tripod to begin with, is that you can unscrew one of the legs here and take apart this tripod and turn it into a monopod, which is really cool if you have any reason to use monopods. I have not yet done a video on monopods, but I do actually own several of them. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to hear more about monopods and when and why you should use them. So here we go, I've taken off one of the legs and also unscrewed the center column of that tripod and then I just twist them together. And now I have a monopod but not all tripods come with this feature, so be sure to look for it if this is something that you think you might need. Another really awesome perk is really nicely demonstrated on my Manfrotto tripod, and it's actually the main reason why I ended up getting this tripod, but the center column here, while it doesn't attach and turn into a monopod, it can become a horizontal column. So this horizontal column is really useful if you like to do product shots or if you need to shoot down on a table. So this was a feature that was really important to me when I was looking for tripods and this was one of few at the time that offered this feature. But I really love it and again, one of the main reasons why I have this Manfrotto tripod to begin with. So the last perk to look out for is does the tripod come with a carrying case? And not all tripods do. The Manfrotto is a really good example of that. It doesn't come with a head or a carrying case but a lot of other tripods on the market do. And so this Mi Photo tripod does come with a case and so when I'm done with using it, I can just fold it up and stick it inside of the case that it comes with. So this is really great for travel and I zip it up and then stick it on top of my suitcase or inside of my suitcase and it's just really easy to travel with my tripod when it can fold up and pack up so nicely like this. So on to the last part of the video, which is explaining why I own four tripods. So let's start at the beginning. I think I already explained that this Benro Travel Flat tripod was the very first one that I bought. This tripod is actually discontinued and no longer available, but that's not the reason why I don't really use it anymore. So I basically just ruined this tripod by sticking a really cheap head on top of it. So don't do that. After that tripod, I went and bought this little carbon fiber tripod. And this is made by 3Pod, which I think is a brand of Adorama. And again, this particular tripod discontinued, no longer available, but I do still use it because it's super lightweight. It's carbon fiber. And at the time that I bought it, it was only $124, which was really, still is really cheap for a carbon fiber tripod. It seemed too good to be true. And in that sense, it really is because it doesn't hold a lot of weight, but still, I'm willing to sacrifice that for the size. So this is my main travel tripod. If I'm going somewhere like on vacation and I want a tripod, but I'm not being paid to be there, then I'm most likely going to bring this tripod just because, again, it's super lightweight and packs up really nicely and is really great for travel. If I do use a camera on it, though, I don't walk away from this tripod. I stand like right over it. It. I even have my hands over it to make sure that it doesn't fall over because again, it's not the most stable tripod. So when it comes to you know tripod stability and size and weight, you kind of just have to make up your own mind about what is it worth to you. And you know, in my opinion, I'm willing to use a slightly unstable tripod with the understanding that I would just have to be there as a physical barrier in case that tripod fails. So that's up to you. That's still personal preference. I'm not saying everyone should do that. And on to my other two tripods. I've I've talked a lot about this Mi Photo tripod because it really is my main go-to tripod if I'm not going on a multi-city trip and I'm being paid to do uh, travel photography or travel videography, then this is likely the tripod I'm going to bring. 
because again, it packs down really nicely. It's heavier than that little carbon fiber tripod, but as a result, it's a lot steadier. And yeah, I just love this tripod. I've had it for a long time now and it's held up really well. I can also convert it into a monopod. So yeah, this is my favorite travel tripod that I use for professional photo and video shoots. And finally, this is my most recent tripod purchase from a couple years ago. I spent a really long time debating if I really needed a heavy set tripod because flexibility and lightweight features were always the most important to me given how much I travel for my photo and video shoots. But a few years ago, I bit the bull and bought this Manfrotto 055 tripod and the accompanying three-way head on top of it and it's been the best purchase I've made in my entire life. I love this tripod. I wish I had bought it sooner. It's not a tripod that I frequently travel with, but I will take it to my highest paying architecture and real estate photo shoots because it's just so stable and I know that it can get the job done really well. But it's mainly a tripod that I use here in the studio to film YouTube videos, to do product shoots in the studio. So yeah, this tripod has been very well worth it for me. So these are the six features that you should look out for if you're buying a new tripod. And now I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you have other features that you would recommend looking into? And what kind of tripod do you use? Let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.